Alright, before we start with data storage, just make sure that your uh, place is published to Roblox and that you have data store service enabled. Um, publishing is obviously top left file published to Roblox or published to Roblox as. And then the enabling studio access to API services is in the home tab, game settings, and then it should be in security. And yeah, just make sure that enable studio access to API services is green. Okay, for this scripting tutorial, we're just going to be dipping our toes in the water. Um, I'm going to go over actual like data store implementation in games in my game design tutorials, but you know, this is just going to be using the API and uh, you know how it uh, really works. Right, so I'm going to script a little bit, then I'm going to explain what's going on. So first we need the actual data store service. So I'm going to do data store service, game, get service, data store service. Then we need a data store from that data store service. So we can use our data store equals uh, data store service, get data store. And you can, I don't know, you can do whatever your name you want with it. I'll just put data one for my name. And uh, right now we're getting to um, the player added. What this will do is, you know, it'll uh, fire an event every time the player is added, and we'll also need a player removing. And then whenever the player is added, we want to uh, define a key here, and that'll be a uh, data store get async. So it's going to find the key inside the data store with the player's user ID. And if the key exists, then we'll print uh, user has data store or just user has data or else we'll print um, user doesn't have data. Now if I go ahead and play this, um, obviously we're not going to have data yet because this is like our first time joining a game and we, uh, you know, we haven't saved anything yet. So I'm going to kind of visualize what a data store does here. It's not exactly like this, but this is just a visualization of it. So let's say that a uh, player had data on the game. You know, they had an inventory or something. And so the, uh, the data store is, you know, located in Roblox's data store service. And uh, when I save this player data inside of a game, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to take that and it's going to give it a key that we assign it, you know, which might just be like a player's user ID. And then it'll, you know, set it to the table of data. So you can save whole tables of data with, you know, strings, numbers, indexes, what, you know, what have you. And then it'll be usable whenever the player rejoins. Usually what I do is I make a sort of a master table on the server that stores everybody's data whenever they join, you know, and then I'll do, um... <clears throat> I'll do something like if they have data, I'll do, you know, save data, and then I'll make a new index with the player's user ID, and then I'll just set it to that key. Now, if they don't have data when they first join, you want to give them some sort of starter data so that whenever they leave, it'll save the starter data in, you know, you get this loop of save data as they, you know, continue playing the game over time. So, I don't know, let's just make some starter data. And in here, we're going to make our inventory nothing in the inventory, 0 XP. I don't know, in uh, reputation, it'll also be 0. And then what I'm going to do if they don't have a key when they do join is I'm going to index that user ID again. And I'm going to use the starter data table. Actually, I can't use that as a reference up there. You actually actually have to put a, uh, a new table in like this. I'll explain this more in the game design tutorial. This is just, you know, Lua theory. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that starter data reference. And so now we should be able to just, uh, you know, print some of the uh, player's data that's on the server. So if I did save data with the user ID, and then let's just say I wanted to print the amount of XP that they had. That'll print zero. See, it's first time joining, so it's making the starter data. Everything's working. Uh, so to actually save the data after they've joined, we're going to go ahead and uh, reference the save data table that we have with the player's user ID. 
index that we created. So if player data, then we're just going to do data store, data store set async. And I'm pretty sure you have to put the key for the first argument. Yeah, player dot user ID will be our key because that's where we're getting our async from. And then we're going to put the table that we actually want to save. And then it will just print a saved user data. Let's see if that works. And so we're going to go ahead and play that. And I don't have data on the first join. So I'm going to do leave game. And hopefully it'll save the data. Studio is kind of sketchy sometimes with player removing. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this a few more times. Okay, so I finally got that to work. So player removing is pretty unstable inside of Studio. Uh, to counteract that for this video, um, I'm just going to make a function too that I can just use to store data. Now for an actual test to see if uh, our data store will keep updating each time. So, um, I don't know, let's just say that uh, every time the player joined, they would get some more reputation. So I'm going to do a save data and the reputation. And I'm going to give them, I don't know, let's just say uh, 10 reputation each time. So if I join, it'll increase that reputation. Oh, we saved the data, and um, I'm going to actually print that reputation too. And so there's 20. Now, we already added 10 that one time, so this is working, obviously. And uh, if I keep rejoining, um, we'll see it increment each time by 10 and it's saving it and yeah there's our data store working now if you ever want to reset an entire data store all you got to do is change the name of the data store so i'll do a uh, data 3 instead um you can see i already had it at data 2 because i already had to reset it one time but uh if i reset that um you know there's no save data inside this new data store key so you know it says user doesn't have data but Using a data store like this is pretty unsafe. There's a lot more to it, and I know I've already thrown a bunch of information on you guys. Um, I've been using data stores since the day they came out, pretty much. So, um, yeah, I'll go over a lot more in the game design tutorials, and I'll see you guys in the next video.